Good morning. Um, I'm Dr. Margaret Stuber. I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist at UCLA, and I've been working with uh, pediatric uh, cancer survivors and their families for the past 20 years, primarily looking at psychiatric um, sequelae of uh, dealing with a life-threatening illness and with the life-saving but often um, relatively traumatic kinds of treatments that we give to these children. I, whoops, well, it switched right over. You already know that this is part of the Childhood Cancer Survivor Study. So uh, we're working with the same sample uh, that Dr. Nathan was talking about. Um, these are all people who were diagnosed between 70 and 86. This is uh, one of our key findings, and, and this is about the prevalence of post-traumatic stress disorder in childhood cancer survivors in young adulthood. Uh, I think all of you are very familiar with what PTSD is, but just to remind you, the three cardinal aspects of symptoms are re-experiencing uh, the traumatic event, uh, having a, a sense of heightened arousal or vigilance, and also avoiding things that remind you of the event. What we found was using those symptoms and a requirement of impaired function and or clinical distress. We had 9% of our survivors who were still reporting this level of symptoms and distress um, many years post-successful uh, post treatment. This was contrasted with a sibling group where there were only 2.2% that uh, reported similar kinds of symptoms. And you can see all the statistics there that this is very, very significant, um, of more than fourfold increase in risk. This is a little bit busier slide, but what we were looking at here were the kinds of things that might be associated with PTSD. Now these are just statistically associated, so you don't know, just looking at these, which came first in some cases. Um, we do know, of course, that intense treatment came first uh, and is therefore a predictor. And we did find that uh, children who had received very intense treatment, as defined by Melissa Hudson, and Dan Green at St. Jude's Hospital uh, were m more likely to report PTSD symptoms. Um, also, very young children who'd received cranial radiation before the age of four as part of their treatment were more likely to report PTSD as adults. What we also noticed was that many of um, the other kinds of symptoms were things that were somewhat worrisome in terms of function. These um, pe people with PTSD were less likely to be employed, were less likely to have finished high school, had personal incomes that were under $20,000, and were less likely to be married than the rest of the, the survivor group that did not have PTSD. And we found that this was most likely in the group that were between the ages of 30 and 40. So these are people who are fair ways um, from their post traumatic from their uh, particular traumatic event, that is the cancer diagnosis and treatment, um, but are dealing with the developmental um, challenges that happen in the 20s and 30s, which really involve all these things, getting jobs, getting married, um, finishing school, and making a living. So the good news here is that over 90% of our childhood cancer survivors are resilient, are doing well, even though um, they have uh, faced a life-threatening event and have often had treatment that went on for several years during their early childhood. Um, however, we do have 9% that are affected and in a clinically significant way. And the people who had very intensive treatment, and particularly the children who had cranial radiation, that is radiation to the brain, before the age of four, are at higher risk. We still need to figure out uh, what the relationship is between these various functional variables and PTSD. It's possible that PTSD makes it less likely for you to get married or to get a job. 
It is also very possible that not being married and not having a job makes you more vulnerable or less protected to maintain symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder and to be clinically distressed by them. It is also possible, and something we have to investigate, whether there's just an, another kind of factor that is a vulnerability to both of these things, to getting PTSD and also not doing very well in your life. And that's what we're going to be trying to figure out next. Thank you.